pull the SAM up here. Okay. We're ready when you are, fellas. I'm going to start uh, encoding here. You ready for that, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right, we're going to encode. Let's go. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. 1935, the Lions win the NFL championship. The Detroit Tigers take the World Series. The Red Wings bring home Lord Stanley's Cup. Joe Lewis begins his rise to world domination. This transforms the Motor City into Detroit, City of Champions. Detroit, Detroit City of Champions, the podcast. I'm Jamie Flanagan. Charles Avison. And we are just been talking about the Tigers, just a, a whole ton uh, about the Tigers. It just it was an amazing run uh, in 34. And then we talked about the characters that brought that to life. And then an even a more amazing run in 35. Exactly. Spoiler alert. Yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> 35, they did. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so 35, they were able to get the job done because yep. Mickey called it. Yeah. So no, today we were just kind of rounding out. We were going to bat a little cleanup. Yeah. Um, and yeah, talk about it's... things that we might have missed or skipped, and then some other interesting things that you found in in your journey, your seven year journey of writing Detroit. Well, the City journey continues. The journey continues really because, um, like, uh, so I, I brought in a little visual aid today. Right. <clears throat> And, so, uh, but before we do that, yeah, we just yeah. want to remind people to uh, and thank people. This is like people following us and liking us and listening yeah. to us, which is like super, super exciting. Uh, they, uh, on Twitter, right? Yeah. Somebody followed me. If he's a dumpster. I know. I saw that. I actually saw that. That's like the coolest I thing. I took a screenshot You're of it. the biggest if he's a dumpster fan in the world, man. And then there's like actually an if he's on, on, on so, Twitter. That's yeah. Like so so somebody cool. is using the the, the moniker, yeah. if he's a dumpster. And he is uh, he posts like really cool old. I was looking through his feet. It's cool. Tiger stuff. Yeah. 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 And and so it, it's kind of neat to, to to watch that. And yeah, like I said, I grew up as a, yeah. you know, as a, you know, reading the newspapers early on. And, and uh, there was, I swear, there was an iffy the dumpster that was writing for is either the free press or the news and you so, sent me uh so oh i know so for me i thought that you know whoever was i didn't even know what iffy the dumpster meant or anything. yeah yeah and i grew up as just like i was like a fan of that article you know <laughs> that of that section and then it was only really once i got into the 1935 stuff that i realized that like the original iffy was you know from the 30s 20s and 30s right so if but if he followed us and so we just want to thank everybody who's listening yeah. and people who are following welcome if he uh, like, <laughs> thanks for following yeah. me uh, but like, subscribe, leave a comment because it, it helps us out. We truly uh, appreciate people yeah. uh, taking the time and spending time with us. So thank you so ever so much. Yeah, for, I'm curious to see what, you know, if, if you ever, you know, if you listen to the show. Or, I invited him to join us and he, he hasn't responded. Well, I'm curious to know where, you know, like how he you know got into that name or, yeah. you know, because, you know, where that because like I've kind of told my story, which is, you know, growing up reading the articles. But uh, I'm curious to see how maybe that maybe he or she, whoever's, you know, writing under Iffy, um, got that handle from like i did like you know reading about it in the 90s or, yeah. or if they're a history person and got into it just you know seeing the original and there are a couple know, of like original, uh so. tiger's history uh followed along and wished us well and said they were listening so Great. appreciate them Welcome. and so we yeah. appreciate everybody who's been uh yeah we always love, and, I, I look forward to doing some guests so like yeah. we can talk about um you know just different elements of it you know yeah. like this and other stuff so i'm looking forward you know I'm looking so forward to the future thanks stuff, to them yeah. and uh thanks to our sponsors yeah gotta love our sponsors <laughs> and and then uh so yeah so today we were going to kind of bat a little cleanup and like talk about some things uh you had come across we you brought in you sent me some pictures and then you brought in it's show and tell day yeah, show and tell yeah. it's show and tell on uh, uh on detroit city of champions uh what did you bring in well so it's 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 uh it's just really a perfect example of sort of the the last 10 years you say like oh yeah i've been on this thing for seven years but you know the this it, it, it continues like every right. day you know i mean it's like it's even though the books are out you know we're you know here we are doing this show and um you know every once in a while i get my hands on something cool and mm -hmm. um so it's a friend of mine uh her name is wendy marsh okay I'm, I'm very good friends with her and her husband david 
And they, and just Wendy just asked me one day, she's like, Hey, I've got this old, you know, 1934 newspaper from my dad and his name is Roy Cash. And so I was, it was like, I was like, what year was from, you know, was it from? She's like 1934. I'm like, and what are you trying to do with it? She's like, <laughs> well, you know, Rap find, fish? It, find it a good home. No, like, find it a good home. Like I'll, I'll take it. You know, that's, that's great. So that, that's, sight unseen, uh, sight unseen. Like I had no idea what the date was. Yeah. I had no idea um whether than any of the contents were sure. or anything like this and so um anyways uh it's like you know it's it's you know it's it's magnificent it's just such a great um like I, my my thought was when i when she was originally uh giving mm -hmm. it to me was that it might be some kind of like a random day sure and that it'd be like kind of cool to just say like on this random day like maybe the tigers beat the red Sox or yeah. you know kind of like you know maybe touch on you know whatever was you know specific to that random day because you know we talk about the big events like maybe there's something kind of obscure or whatever but um anyways it's no but it's really it's a treasure because the newspaper the date of the newspaper i got it right here um september 25th 1934 and like the day before the, that you can see in the, the cover of this um, uh -huh. i think you uploaded some pictures i did i see. just pulled it up Right on the very cover, Tigers win flag. Tigers win this flag. This is the day after the Tigers win their first win their first. Oh pennant. my god! Yeah, this Look is the pen of money newspaper, and yeah. it's got this great uh, character, uh, the lot little lion and lion, yeah, bad tiger, boy tiger yeah. Uh, character uh, across the uh, with the headline there. Yeah, and the banners. Pennant. It's got some great illustrations with yeah. the tigers all dancing around. It's yeah, FS Nixon was just a legendary like. It's he's real his his illustrations of the tiger um of tiger anything back then like there he is mm -hmm. right here on the next on the next section here yeah that's F S Nixon I've got him all through my book for the tigers I mean he's like he is like almost um like whenever you read about anything 1934 tigers 1935 tigers um you see F S Nixon like tiger illustrations all right. over it so he's almost like his illustrations like these quirky tigers. Um, are really synonymous with the 1934 and 35 Tigers. Yeah. So it's a really good example of all that on there. And um, yeah, well, the, you know, the story she said was that, that she gave me was that um, her dad, Roy, was born in 1934. Mm -hmm. So he so he didn't collect this himself. His, oh, okay. his, his dad, her, uh, Wendy's grandfather, Floyd, um, got well, the newspaper. This is an interesting one from yeah. this year. We'll hang yeah. on to it for June. Yeah, well, it's an interesting one because it obviously it shows what it, you know, that it was an important day. Is, is that his birthday, September 25? I, uh, you know, you just got, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I but it was her. like from his birth yeah. year. I think and Wendy's they watching this show. If she's watching, maybe <laughs> throw, let us yeah, know. Yeah, throw, throw, it up, throw up in the comments um, if you're watching. Wendy, yeah, yeah, but uh, anyway, I don't, I don't know about that, but um, at the but same it, time, 34. it's significant. Oh, you know? yeah. And so, um, so just think about the lineage of this for a second now, James. You right. Think about this. So you've got the so you got you know um, uh, a, a father passing on to his son, who then in turn passed it on to his to his daughter. You know this newspaper. What it, what is it? it's over eighty? What is it, eighty four years old? Yeah. It's almost yep. eighty four years old of the day. Um, anyways, you know it's look about how many years have passed through time for this newspaper, and here it is on this show. You know, it's just such a cool six years. It's eighty six. Thank you. Yeah, the math is coming up on eighty six. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and, it, and it's really and it's almost to the month. You know, yeah. Tonight, you know, the twenty fifth of September. So I just was, I just was great. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool to bring in. There's some really interesting stuff in here, and, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and it's actually in really good shape. I mean, it's surprising because it was folded, and that's like we talked about it on an early show. You know, anybody that's got any newspapers that they're trying to preserve, the, you know, the number one rule, do not fold. You know, if you find them, you know, they're going to be folded because, I mean, look at this. Look at the difference in, in size. Sure, sure. I mean, it's a one foot by Un six inch panel. Unfold them. Exactly. It's a little tougher to, um, you know, it takes up more space to unfold them. But they'll last but, longer. Yeah, because the acid seeks to gravitate towards the folds. And right. then you can see the brown dark yep. lines that form at the on the, on the lines. And so it seeks to find the edges, and then once they once the the, the acid from both directions meet, yeah, then the then a, then a, that's when the middle gets eaten away, the middle gets eaten away, yeah, and then the newspaper just starts to fall apart. So I, I love this. But this one's in good shape. This yeah. one's in good shape, considering that it was folded. Um, the second one does it has no acid lines on it, which is great. Yeah. Um, they're both from the same paper, but they're um different components of the sports. Oh, section. okay. So yeah, that's yeah, great. It's the cover. He so he saved the cover, which has got a, a feature story on. Um, immediately after they won, they, uh, they won the pennant. They, um, they had a, a, a they, they had a party and they actually say in here that it was supposed to be sort of an impromptu party. Yeah. And it turned into just like a total rager. Like Walter <laughs> Hagen was there. Walter <laughs> Hagen was there. And Walter actually, it. Walter actually mentions on here. It's a great little line. Walter Hagen actually says, um, how he came to find out about the, about the pennant. Yeah. So he says, uh, 
It says right here, it was it was to have been a quiet little affair arranged by Willem Chittenden and a few old timers. But but uh, it says before evening, the word got around and a celebration worthy of a championship ensued. Plans were outlined for the big civic celebration for Saturday night, which will be climaxed by a banquet at the Statler Hotel. Washington Boulevard will be the scene of the public celebration when the Tigers will march headed by the masked bands from the book Cadillac to the Hotel Cellar. So they're talking about the you know, the, the real one. You know, this was yeah. like an impromptu one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Harry Bennett and uh, it says Harry Bennett and Harvey Campbell took turns at, at, at presiding at the speaker's table. They're talking about the party here. Walter, and this is Walt right here. Walter Hagen told how Mickey Cochran became an American League champion on the golf course yesterday afternoon. He was on the 14th hole and in a sand trap working as hard as as though he were at Navin Field when the flash came that Boston had defeated New York. So, so he, so that when Boston beat, you know, they had won the previous yeah. day, and then uh, when Boston beat New York, they because the season wasn't over, they still had seven, yep. nine yeah. games yep. to play. Yeah, but Mickey actually says in this paper, yeah, that it allowed them to basically coast the rest of the year. There's yeah. no stress on them. They sure. could, you know, use, you know, they could rest some of their, you know, walking wounded, including himself, which was a little bit beat up at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So so I just. I, yeah, so that's great, and um, you know, you know, I obviously thank Wendy and um, you know, Wendy for the gift. Cause yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. And it'll, it'll read the gladsome details yeah. in today's sports section. Yeah, the gladsome. So it's like good news, <laughs> good news. You know, yeah, it is the first pen of the Tigers have won in 25 years. So it was wow. something that uh, you know, it was something that they really, um, you know, that they they uh, it was a big deal. Of course. So the paper was uh, 26 pages. It says like, on guard, Detroit Free Press on guard for over a century. Three cents. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so, things like this surviving, right? So this is 1934. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, this is the all. the midst uh, of the depression. My house uh, is old. I live in a really old house. It was built in 1831, pre Civil War. It's Dang. crazy. Yeah. The cross beams in the basement are logs with bark on them. It's nuts. Um, Beautiful home though. Yeah. Oh, thank you, yeah. man. Yeah. And uh, so, but uh, there was an so they built on a garage and then a, a dormer above that. And, uh, you know, there's a bathroom there too. And that was built on in 1932 and there's parts in the basement. There's, uh, like they try to do like some insulation. Some of it is just crumpled up newspaper. I was just going to say, I was going to predict where you're going to, where you're going with that. Jammed because, up in there. And I pulled a couple yeah. out and they were from the thirties. Yeah. They were from was, the 1930s. Was, yeah, that's what I mean. Cause there's, I've, I've met a lot of people just like on the road doing art shows and they, and they, that story, what you're saying is like often repeated that, that, you know, that was a standard that was a standard method, you know, mode of, you know, insulation yeah. back then and, you know, cheap and easy. Just so in the depression, I mean, you're covers. not, you're not wasting stuff. You no. just spent three whole cents on that paper. Yeah. Either you're going to use it to line the birdcage. You're going to use it to wrap some fish. You're going to yeah. use it to insulate the house. Oh, mo many reasons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then in, in, in another example, decoupage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, Hank Greenberg had a great. There was a there was a, a line. I I don't know. It's in my. I think it's in my book somewhere. But Hank Greenberg talked about how, um, like they like even the players were like, you know, they they were you know way you know they're not the pair the way they got paid back then is nothing like they get paid right, now. And Hank right. Greenberg at the you know at this time is you know he's an unknown. He's not. He's barely getting anything. He's just getting paid as like a regular guy. Um, and he was actually saying how somebody would set the newspaper down in the lobby of the hotel yeah. and the the players would just scramble for it. Uh, and it was just that one newspaper would get passed around uh, to like the, like, you know, half the team because yeah. they, you know, they like, I mean, a newspaper was, um, you know, it was like a, it's like almost like a luxury item and they're for people that are counting every penny. Yep. Um, yeah. So I don't doubt the, the, you know, the stuffing of the, you know, for insulation. At yeah. Least. yeah. So, I mean, we're lucky to have this and it's such good shape. Oh, and uh, Maria, yeah. you said was the. No, Wendy. Wendy. Yep. Wendy, Wendy, yep. Wendy. Wendy, thank you for sharing that with, with Charles and now him sharing it with all of us. That is, uh, that is so cool. So what else is notable uh, in this paper? Uh, there's a couple things. I was kind of, I was, I, I, you know, I went through it and read it, you know, I've read on the cover, um, you know, something that's a little, you know, just going through the, the day's news besides mm -hmm. Detroit. You know, it says U.S. to decide on relief sums. You know, talking about the federal government trying to figure out how much you know relief, like, is in unemployment they want to put out. And sure. Where have we heard that before? It's yeah. like today in politics. Well, that's like, where it all started. That's what I'm saying. Here it is. You know, like fast forward. We say 86 years. Yeah. And, and here it is. You know, nothing's really changed. <laughs> we were talking about how much money the you know U.S. federal wants to give to unemployment or whatever. We're in the same hole. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot. You know, just stuff like that. I thought was interesting. That you know the. Uh, um, but the, you know, the story, the cool thing about this, this cover story is that they talk about, uh, it's got Cy Perkins in this article mm -hmm. and Cy Perkins was, um, was the, uh, was Mickey's bench coach. 
but he was but he was way more than that. Cy Perkins, when Mickey first came up to Philadelphia A's back in 1925, was his very first year. Um, Cy Perkins um, was Cy Perkins was the starting catcher for the A's at that okay. moment. But he was going on. He'd 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 caught 1,500 games at that point. Wow. And so he was like starting to kind of give out like his legs and knees and stuff. He was starting to get worn out pretty good. And he had his wife was sick. He was distracted and all this stuff. And so Connie Mack, who was like an I totally iconic manager at that time, um, Connie Mack was looking for basically Cy Perkins replacement. And so he found it in the form of Mickey Cochran. When Mickey Cochran came up, that's what's so kind of beautiful about this article, um, is that it is that he taught is that um Mickey was like he talks about how Mickey was like was a great hitter, but he was a terrible, like he really was not a great defender. And so Cy Perkins really helped to to coach him up and get him um, you know, caught up to the major league level. And then after this 1925 season, Cy Perkins went to the Yankees and and initially he was gonna be a player, but didn't didn't really um sort of work out like um like he's you know, he stayed with the A's like a backup for a while, whatever. But anyways, it it got to the point where in 19, this is a, fast forward to 1933 and Cy Perkins. That's when he went, that's when he went to the Yankees. That's what the article talks about. He went to the Yankees as a manager to be like a bench coach for Joe McCarthy, for Joe McCarthy for right. New York. And so anyways, um, and so, so when he gets over there, uh, um, he, like he, he's all, he's like ready to go. He's ready to do this thing. And then Mickey gets the job in Detroit as the, as the player manager. And Mickey says, Hey, Cy, come with me to Detroit. Oh. And so Cy's like, Well, I can stay with the Yankees and pick up like a guaranteed World Series check because we're going, you know, the Yankees, we're going to the World Series. Yeah. 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 You know, we're going to get this extra bonus money from the World Series. Mickey's like, Let me tell you how I'm going to write it. Exactly. He's <laughs> like, You're, you're going to get that bonus, but it's going to be with us. Oh, my you know God. I mean? And Cy's like, I didn't really b- believe him at that moment, but yeah. um, he's like, I just went with Mickey because I love the guy. Uh, and so he went with Mickey to Detroit and that's, and he got his bonus money in his very first <laughs> year. Yeah. So that's what's kind of, that's, that's why it's a great little story that oh. we talk about it, you know, and that. So it's a, that's, you know, some of that, a lot of that stuff, you know, the, the, the side, you know, partner with Mickey and the A's, I, I have that in the books, but yeah, um, some of the other little details there um, I did not have, which I thought was you know, a great story. So the, the like I say, this is the the first few pages of this newspaper are um a lot. It's like it's right, straight from the main section. That was the cover. That was the actually the uh, sure. cover page. But God. when you get in the sports section, is when it starts to get uh, even even cooler. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you put the picture up or anything, but you can see right at the very beginning on this page right here. Yeah. Yeah, I can read the headlines for those people that can't can't see it. Mickey predicted flag after opening workout. Oh, there were yeah. many hours of despair along with triumphs before his prophecy was borne out. This is Charles P. Ward. Yeah. So right, I mean, here it is, right here in the newspaper, talking about Mickey's pro, uh, you know prophecy, talking about how he, the Tigers were going to win. Because it's funny you mentioned that Mickey did make that prediction. Yeah. Uh, during the opening workout, yeah. but none of these reporters, they all had it they in their notes it, exactly. and they're like, yeah, yeah okay, next. Yeah, sure thing, Mickey. he says the same thing. He says it wasn't fit for print. Right. It wasn't fit for print. We, we couldn't, and Mickey even, and he actually alludes to the idea that Mickey himself may not have wanted it necessarily for print um, because, you know, especially right off the bat, because maybe it might give other people bulletin board material to use against him. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, cause he, he alludes to that idea in this, that Mickey, you know, Mickey himself is actually kind of saying, well, you know, we don't necessarily want to you know print all that, but, but he, but he's talking about it in here. Like, just, you know, he was behind the scenes. He was like behind the scenes. He's like, you know, this is, this is happening. Mm-hmm. You know, this is happening. So, um, so yeah, you know, so that's that's interesting that uh, you know Charles P. Ward. That's a like a third or fourth example of that. What do you know about Charles P. Ward? Right? He did he write a lot? Was he? Yeah. On oh the yeah, free, big time. Beat? Free press. Yeah, the big free press. Right. Okay. I actually, I have a picture of him in the second book. So I have a whole section on like the media of Detroit in 1930s. I actually have a photo of him in there too. Mm-hmm. Um. So he was a big. Now he's a big. He's one of the free press. Uh, um. I, I, he was one, definitely one of the writers. I think. I think Ify, which is Malcolm Bingay, was actually their sports editor. Yeah. Um, but in Charles P. Ward was one of their like top writers. Um, I believe that's how it was. I have to kind of double check, but that's, uh, but he was one of their main sports guys. He was like their main tiger guy. There were many hours of despair. Yep. <laughs> it's just exactly. the, the language, the prophecy was born out. Yeah, but you can it's see just it right people there. Don't, people don't speak yeah. like that or write like yeah. that. And it's like, why don't people speak like that anymore? Because it's people don't read yeah, and they're not writing like that. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a vicious circle of no, so yeah, it's, a, it's just a great concept, especially since they, you know, right, there it is like some, we've already been talking about how, 
um, you know, Mickey is like just determined to make this happen. And, you know, right off the cover of this, they're, they're in the, and it's a great little article. I wish I had time to actually read it on air, but yeah. um, it's a great article. Cause it's a, it's just a great summary of the entire 1934 season. Um, it's a, it's just a really great, uh, they, you know, he goes through it. It's just, a, it's a great summary. It's, but it's unfortunately, I mean, there you can is. see how long it is. It's like, um, I mean, it's so, oh yeah, that's long. a, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, but it's a big deal. I mean, yeah, it's, oh, uh, when was the last time? Yeah. This is 1934. They took the pennant. 25 when, years. So it's been 25 years. Too. They said it's been 25 years. Yeah. Since 1909. Okay. So, the, I mean, they're pretty, the, the city's pretty darn excited. Uh, oh, they and, talk about and it. And they're going to. Yeah, they talk about it. They say right here, he actually says right here, he talks about one of the moments of excitement. Um, I was just reading this earlier. He actually talks, which is a great little mini synopsis of how Page big it was. two of the sports section says, yeah, bring says, on the series. He says, um, where is this section? Where's the, uh, he talks to just, he, he, he talks about how uh, insane the fans were when they, <laughs> when they came home to Detroit. I love it. Oh, right. I think I know what it is. Hold on a second. I think it's, uh, uh, let's see. He just talks about how there was like 70,000 fans. It right. was like the biggest game. This one particular game was like the biggest Don't game. Don't be afraid to just grab it and move it if you're moving. Oh, this mic. Yeah, I yeah, gotcha. yeah. Just grab it and um, keep it with you. Keep it with you, man. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So let me see. Uh, um, here, I'm looking at the wrong section. People don't want to hear me. People want to hear you. That's not true, Jim. That, no, that you're, is star. you're the star of the that show. I'm absolutely true. Kick. I so beg to differ. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with Charles. You guys lie. Wait, right here. I got it. Okay. Perfect. So, um, so this is they're they're talking about um it says uh Sunday night, August 12th, the Tigers uh, entrained for New York for the series with the Yankees, which everybody in New York predicted would decide the pennant race for good. They still had a four-and-a-half game lead over the Yankees when the series got underway with a doubleheader August 14th. When the Bengals arrived in New York, they found the city in an uproar. When they went to the park for the opening game, they found themselves they, they found thousands of fans milling outside. When the first game – I guess I, I, I guess I misread it. This is actually in New York. It's because he says uh, Sunday night, the Tigers entrained for New York. Yep, so they were in New York when this happened. So when the first game got underway, 77,000 fans were in the park and 30,000 more were out, outside <sighs> fighting to get in. Nice. They were, wow. they were charging the horses of, they were, they were charging the horses of mounted policemen, knocking down turnstiles and fighting with each other. It was the largest crowd that ever tried to get in to see a baseball game. It says the Tigers ended the battle with the Yankees prediction ringing in their ears. And then so, um, I guess I'll finish this up. They'll, it says uh, the Tigers entered the battle with the Yankees prediction ringing in their ears. They'll crack, said Rupert, said uh, Rupert confidently. That was one of the owners of the Yankees. Yeah. You can depend upon that. New York received the same punishment for its cockiness that Washington had received a few weeks before. The Tigers, instead of cracking, won two of the one the, the two for, for they said this he this is actually his typo. The Tigers, instead of cracking, won the first two games of the series and convinced even New York that the Tigers were destined to become the American League champions for the year. So that was like wow. that. So there it was. They they call that one the little the little World Series. That's how big that was. Was seventy seven thousand. That was the, that was in New York. Seventy seven thousand fans for this game. He said it was the big world. The a little they call it. Yeah, they called it the mini the uh, the the um, the mini World Series. They're the the the, the, the little World Series. Something like that. It was like the uh, just based on the sheer number of people. Sheer, that were how there. big the games were because they were saying like this is the series that was going to decide whether the tiger's going to win the pennant or not that's awesome yeah. yeah so the little world i think it was called the little world series mm. i think that's what it was what so, the name yeah was. i got that page up that you were just reading from in the article there it says uh the story of the tiger's rise to the pennant and that's what you're reading yeah. from and it goes the whole length of the paper down there oh it's just insane two it's columns huge. wide like i almost need we almost need a, a, a separate show just for me to re read yeah. that, that but, summary but i like huge. i like uh i like that page that that you were on there because the headline that goes across the top oh this is amazing yeah brings it brings across uh, yeah, another this. well and not, not that but oh. the other uh, this page with gar wood right oh yeah there yeah that's why that's another little gem that was in yeah this thing. wood what does it say uh it says um the headline where's it at uh no is that, that that's there. not the page you're on oh it's in the front of cover yeah it's not no right. it was on the second page it was on page two um, I just have where is it that. uh no Huh. What, it was, the on, the, it was on the next the page. Oh, yeah, it was oh, on, the next, on okay. the next page. I know what you're talking about, too. Should there you go. Oh, they're handling that with white gloves. There I feel right like there. you should be wearing 
Yeah, I know. Uh, These are nah, like... you're good. I, I, you know, I used to. I used to handle newspapers with white gloves, but it's it's unnecessary. All it's, right. It's good. As long as your hands aren't dirty, you're good. All right. But um, anyways, this – um, uh, so, so yeah. So the, the headline all I, across I got the yep. top. Yeah. Wood plans plea to harms with the state for return of race to river course. Yeah. So he says, so this is Gar Wood. Um, Once public to see events, Gar going yeah. to London. Well, yeah, this, well, he, so what's, uh, what's going on with that? This story is really the, the synopsis of this concept is that there was like an old course that Gar Wood liked on the Detroit river better mm -hmm. than the course that they had run in previous races. Mm. And he was like, it, but it was like officially sanctioned by um, like these international racing committees that if they were uh, that any further challenges, was to follow this particular course right. and he was like no i like the old one better so it's 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 not really that big of a deal but okay. what is kind of a big deal is a, the image i sent you about garwood which is kind of cool yeah there was another uh you highlighted the garwood yeah i highlight a little square on it the little red square um that's i thought that was particularly interesting which is that uh it's it's just a little factual um blurb um right but it talks about uh this it says it's called sport light and then it's just like little um, little facts here and there. And so fact number 12, it says the speedboat record for motorboats was set at, set at Algonac, Michigan on September 20th, 1932 when Garfield... Ar Gar the world record for speed on water and yeah. that was and that still held in 19, um, you know, in, obviously 1934, but in 1935 right. as well, that was still the record. So... Yeah, that, that came from that page. And then at the top of that page, it's a big picture. Oh, yeah, this is it. It's, it's a team photo thing. champion. Yeah. Yeah, this is such a great picture. I, I, I don't, I'd never, that seen looks this. so contemporary. I'd never seen this particular thing in the, you know, this, this photo is iconic because this is the Tigers, um, this is the Tigers, uh, 1934, uh, champions, like team photo. Right. But you know, I've seen the photo in many cases. But I've never seen it really incorporated into the newspaper in yeah. person like this. I mean, yeah. I've seen it like doing microfilm stuff, but right. but never when it's you know this is how big it is. You can see how massive. I mean, this is like I love the big Hudson's ad in there. Yeah, too. this is like <laughs> I don't even know how big this is, but it's like a foot tall. The picture itself is like a foot tall yeah. by like I don't even know eighteen inches wide. Or it's the whole. It's wide. the whole fold. It's the yeah. entire above the fold. Yep, and it says champions in the background. Mm. Um, it's just it's cool because they ex the photo that you see a lot of times is this. I mean, this is the photo you see, but a lot of times they in in every case you see this photo. It's it's got like uh, it's they they took this photo. I it was like there's like a wall backdrop, like a big wall, and they're sitting on bleachers. Um, but this is the first one that you see where they actually have that wall removed, and the backdrop is just the the newspaper. You know, it's like a black background. I mean, like I said, so that's cool. that it's real those cool. graphics that looks that does not look like 1934. Oh, it looks way more contemporary than that. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Their newspapers, they were, the, the newspapers back then were sen were sensational. Yeah. They were incredibly cool. Um, the, the, one of the things that we don't have today. I love today, that font. Yeah, one, one of the things we don't have today, which is what they did, they had, which was so cool, was they called the Rotogravir, Rotogravir supplements on mm. every Sunday. Oh. So every Sunday they would include a um, a special section called the, this rotor rotor gravier. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants, if you want to, if you want to see an example of what they are, I've got I collected these things for my books, so I use rotor graviers extensively in my books. But if you want to just see if you're listening right now and you want to see what I'm talking about, um, just look on look on e uh, eBay, and it's spelled R O T, so rota gravier. So R O T A G R A V is in Victor U R E. So okay. roto roto grav you could say it pronounce it roto gravure like uh -huh. that. but um but anyways you, if you'd look that up if you search for that term you will see some of the coolest images you have ever seen especially if you're like a history person yeah. like you love like nostalgia and stuff the the stuff that you find on youtube there's because every newspaper did it back then yeah. the, the major newspapers all put out these roto gravure supplements on sundays and they are just the coolest papers they use the, this inc this really high grade it was like they printed on copper plates and they um they rolled it through these machines so like the the precision of the photos is staggering mm -hmm. i mean you literally you just can't imagine how like when you see them in person these road givers, i started like, my own collection of them um i have this i i i have i i would i have one of the greatest like road gravier sport you know detroit sports collections but they uh i, I don't have the too. i don't have the number one there's a guy All that right. i met along the way that had actually has a an incredible collection i use his stuff uh, for the first book but um but anyways, it uh, 
the road to it's, so they had this the Sunday supplement mm -hmm. and it talked about local stuff, it talked about national stuff, it talked about international stuff. So they had all these photos. So like you would you know photos from like Ireland, they'd say like this is you know County Cork in Ireland or whatever, uh -huh. and they were just beautiful beautiful photos on every Sunday, and they did it for like um from like the early 1900s all the way through like the 40s. Wow. And then they just stopped doing it. But they were like, like so that was kind of like your little bonus on Sundays was you would get this. I mean, it was like just the, just these beautiful sections mm -hmm. in the paper. And you would just, you can't help but marvel now or even I'm sure then because they, they were highly collectible. You find them, they pop up in a lot of scrapbooks okay. when you see that stuff. So um, so yeah, newspapers back then were, were the, they were the primary vehicle of conveying right. information. Radios were big, but newspapers were, were it. I mean, this uh, is how you really, um, got your hands on, you know, wall to wall information. So, what else, what else in this, in these 26 pages, um, yeah, have you come across up. that, um, uh, you found interesting? Well, one of the things that I didn't find is actually really interesting is that, um, is that just the day before this, which was, let me make sure I get this date, right? I was like, September um, 25. I thought no, I saw. it was September. Well, the date of the newspaper is the 25th. Yep. Um, but the 23rd of 1930 to September 23rd of 1934 was the lion's first game. Oh, first game. Oh, so two days before this was the Detroit Lions' first game, and wow. they, they beat the New York Giants yeah nine nine nothing. Wow! Um, and so where is it? Is there any I mention mean, of the Lions? It's, it's two days the... after. That's why right, I was right. like, at first I thought it was the twenty fourth, and I was like, man, this is really missing. But um, but it, yes, but it was actually this is two days later, and of course it's a big day for the Tigers. But sure. still, they could have found another little. There's not a I mean, box they, score. They nothing. talk about some the whole sports little, section. Yeah, nothing, there's nothing. that like one little. They they talk about a player that got injured during the game, but that's really about for it. the Lions. No, for the New York Giants. Oh, psh, okay. And so, um, but they're otherwise, it's like they couldn't have found one little glint, you know, like one little thing. But yeah, it kind of ties into what we're going to talk about with the Lions. How the Lions were really, I mean, in the Tiger's shadow. I mean, they, yeah. the Lions came to the city hoping to like a, a, like associate with the tigers yeah and man they they found the opposite initially happened oh. they were they were in the tigers shadow big time i mean okay. big time it's like their only way that they could even be remotely relevant was to, for them to win, they had to win <laughs> big. and so that's like that's like the lions found themselves in a situation where they're like we don't not only have to just win to stay relevant yeah. like we have to win a championship to stay even like even and even then they barely stayed relevant even okay. winning a championship so that's going to be a big topic that we talk about for the lions okay but it, but that's like found in this in this you know concept is that they're not even you know first game for an nfl team in the city and it's like the next day you know i'm sure there was the, the previous day if we had that paper um they'd be talking about it but in this one um, they're like, yeah, that was two days ago. Yeah. But it was their first Lions. game. Yeah. It was their first game. Yeah. It happened just right before this ah. paper. So that's one thing that was like one of the first things I was really looking for yeah. to see some, see if I could find some lion stuff in here. But, um, another great thing here is this photo, which is uh cherry street. Right. And you can see the construction. There's a picture. This is a beautiful photo. I, I, I hadn't seen this one before. Bring on the world series. Yeah. They are, um, in this, it says, yep. Now bring on the world series is the header for that photo. And what it is is workmen uh, are, are getting to going to town on the, uh, the temporary bleachers out in left field. Oh, yep. They're, oh. Building, they're building the bleachers for, uh, for housing the 15,000 fans that are going to be at the world series. So they're starting construction on it in this photo. Yep. <laughs> It's cool. You got a little kid riding a bike riding yeah. down the street. He's like kind of going, oh, that's what's going on. But you see the truck that's carrying the lumber for this. Like this is almost should be like the header for the video or whatever. Like yeah. that George Moriarty, just so people can kind of see it. Um, Cause it's just so cool. He's got the lumber truck sitting there yeah. um, with all the planks ready to go. And yep. They're about to go to town. You can see the wall for the, for the, the on to the right of the photo. It's got the wall, the uh, left field wall that they're about to build it over. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, the 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 headline of the story underneath it is oh, uh, a, ba a, a Babe Ruth. Yeah. Yep. No one seems to care as Bambino bows out. Yep. This is the Babe Ruth's last uh, season in 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 New York for the Yankees. Yeah. Yep. And, so, and did the Tigers just beat the the Tigers just beat the Yankees? Uh no. In this case, the Yankees had just been beaten by the Red Sox. Oh, the Red Sox. And that's okay. what secured the Tigers' uh, okay. pennant. And but anyways, but this article is about Babe Ruth. Yeah. And how he's his, his feelings are hurt. His old idol feels hurt as only fifteen hundred turn out for his last game. Oh. So it's in New York. It says the last. Let's read a little quick header. The last official game played by George Herman Ruth, the most famous baseball player the world has ever known, as a regular member of the New York Yankees was handsomely celebrated today by a dismal scattering of some 1,500 or fewer spectators. Ooh. The Yankee Stadium was a yawning cavern. The Babes 
sat in the dugout before the game, glum and depressed. His final appearance had been extensively advertised. All the papers featured it. Yep. Somehow we thought it would be an outpouring of the faithful to say, uh, uh, I can't even pronounce that, off Will, off Widerson. Oh, 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 you know, that is, it's uh, Avita Zane. Avita Zane. <laughs> I've never seen it written. I like that. Okay. To say Avita Zane, if, if not goodbye in baseball's greatest figure, but there wasn't. I hadn't thought it possible for the crowds to forget quite so quickly. I know that the Bay was deeply hurt. He was gnawed off at a corner of an oblong plug of tobacco, his fingers as usual, ink staining from autographing baseballs. He said in his rare and juicy vocabulary that there was no no fun in playing before such a small crowd, but that he would start the game. Wow. So, um, yeah, so so in contrast to what they were saying about that little World Series, yeah. where there were 77,000 fans. By this point, the Yankees were eliminated, and yeah. nobody's there. Oh, man, yeah. oh, man. So, so How quickly they forget. Well, yeah, well, the, you know, Yankees fans, you know, they have a pretty high expectation. Yeah. You know? I mean, especially when they're winning World Series, like, every year back then. You know, they're, like, they're eliminated from the World Series this year. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm that, not going, you know, football's kicking off. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so, man, that's just sad, though, because it's Bay Ruth's last game. Yeah. As a Yankee. I, I'd never known that either. Well, that's that funny because was so... we were looking at the movie Play Ball, and they just showed how he would get yeah. mobbed, yeah. even in even in away games. Well, even in this, it says his fingers were ink stained from signing baseballs, like just as usual. Like it's yeah. like a permanent, like a tattoo of ink on his fingers because yeah. he's, as usual, signing baseballs. I mean, how juicy was his uh, English, his, his language, though? Uh, I think it was pretty juicy. I don't think it was, I don't think it was, uh, you know, that they could really, um, Printed it the exact yeah. stuff that he said. You Probably know what I mean? not. I mean, I think it's. I think it's the, those movies that the, the babe that I've envisioned is seen in the movies where you know with like John Goodman, right, right, right. where uh, you know I'm, I'm sure it wasn't the most printable um, stuff. And I, I've actually read firsthand accounts of people that remembered Babe, and yeah. they were like, "Yeah, like he, like uh, you know, he was like an idol, but at the same time, like if you actually knew him, like day to day, like you wouldn't think he was like really an idol. Like yeah. he was dirty, like not <laughs> not dirty, like you know, like as far as like being covered with dirt, but yeah. like, but he was like as foul mouthed as you could be, mm -hmm. and like you know, just enjoy how stories. descriptive that that yeah. article is. Uh, just it, the writing in itself, it's oh, so descriptive. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, that's one of the things I really fell in love with with this, with all this whole project early on was like the way that they wrote was just. I mean, the writing back then was just cool. It was so cool. My favorite was the Detroit Times because they would actually have like a banter going back and forth between the between the writers. Okay, like they would actually like like they would make fun of each other. Uh. Um, you know, they would kind they would like have, send like little messages to each other, kind of like making fun of each other or praising the other guy or something. Mm. If he, if his article is very, if he has an article on this, which is on here too, if he, the dots are right on the cover. Yeah. Um, and so his article is very similar to that too, with that, with that style of prose where it's like flowery, like, you know, um, you know, some of this, uh, some, he, they have, they have fun with their writing, you know, mm -hmm. and these are the kind of people that just really pound out, pound out, um, articles like all day every day they might even write out underneath a few pseudonyms just to fill columns well, I, because this this at the top and when we looked at the uh beginning it was like final edition you know yeah uh and there were there were a couple of editions sure. throughout the day sure it wasn't just the daily paper yeah uh it was there were a couple of editions throughout the day well that's right so see. these reporters yeah they were grinding well, the newspapers would say like extra extra you know yeah. like they have the extra edition because there was something breaking breaking news and yeah. you know maybe maybe you read the paper in the morning and then the the kids like uh you know extra extra you know mm -hmm. the, something happened some something big just happened read some, all about it you know and then that's crazy why, going down you know, the, the people are like oh what i gotta read that you know they sell an extra paper that day and make extra money so it's totally different times. You know, it was just kind of a cool thing that, uh, you know, once you put the paper down for the day, it was all about, you know, talking with each other. That's like, interesting, though, that the headline on that one on Iffy's article there, it's like unbeatable team. If he places his accolades on all time, all American ball club, it, it's like so if he's kind of a player in the game. Well, no, he, yeah, he's well, no, he, he is, puts his accolades on the. Well, thing. he's deciding his all-time team based on what you know. This he's kind of an older guy at this point. He's right. been what, been writing articles on the on baseball since the early 1900s. Yeah, and so he cobble he puts his list together of the of like if he was to build like the greatest team ever, this was the team that he would not the Tigers, but the, this like he gathers players from all through baseball history. But they they invoke the writer's name in the headline. Yeah, and iffy. not just the byline. Yeah, it's it's interesting that they've in, they invoke. Oh they yeah, use yeah, the writer. Places, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. they use the writer's name in the headline. That yeah. it's like you know, 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if I mean, he was like a main, you know, he was one of the big names in the yeah. Detroit, you know, he's, I believe, again, I think he was the editor at this time. Um, but uh, it's interesting to see actually what his all time team is, which is at first, I can read it off uh, at first base, he has Hal Chase. Mm -hmm. Um, at second base, he has Charlie Gehringer. Okay. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and then shortstop Honus Wagner, third base, Jimmy Collins, right field, Ty Cobb, center field, Tris, uh, Tris speaker, left field, Babe Ruth catcher, Mickey Cochran pitchers, Christy Mathewson, uh, Bill Donovan, who was on the, who was a Detroit tiger early mm -hmm. uh, Detroit tiger early on in early 1900s and, uh, Rube Waddell, Walter Johnson and Grover, Ale Grover Alexander. And Le he's got lefty Grove on there too. <laughs> He's got him um, as a DH a in there. What's he got? Of, well, he's got a stack. Those are all pitchers. I did yeah, just yeah, say yeah. like one last little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out on. But it's interesting to see that he's got one, two, uh, three, four Tigers in his all-time team. Right. Bill Donovan, um, the Ty Cobb, Charlie Gehringer, and uh, what was that for? Oh, and Mickey Cochran. Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, but it's but it's cool. It's a great little article that he writes in there too. And the, the the cool thing is that he really goes into detail about Hal Chase, who was a player from the early 1900s, mm -hmm. and he talks about him like his. He says like back in the early 1900s, first baseman used to basically just be guys that would stand on first and catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Like it's all they would do. But Hal Chase was such a great defender that he would actually like. He actually played like almost like second base and allowed the second baseman to slide over further, which allowed the shortstop to slide over further, and that it you know allowed far more coverage of the infield, which is like actually what ended up becoming the standard for around which baseball is still played. Mm. You know, but back in the early days, the second baseman was played way closer to first base. You know, the and everybody was shifted far more. You know, there was way bigger holes in the infield, and so. He was actually saying he was like, that's one of the reasons why Hal Chase is my favorite first baseman oh. ever because he, like, defensively was so good that he just completely changed. He the set game. that tone. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. You know, kind of, but he talks about Charlie Garner, how great he was. Um, of course, Ty Cobb. He, you know, he just goes. Well, I don't even need to talk about Cobb. He's so great. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, the surprising thing too was about the pitchers because he he actually lists of all the pitchers he just mentioned. He talks about Rube Waddell mm -hmm. as um, he's like, you know, these guys are all great, but Rube, in his opinion, was like um, this, you know, was this thing, was the best of all the guys he saw. And I'm not going to go too deep into it, but um, Rube Waddell, if, if maybe there's, I'm sure there's people have heard his name, but you may, you know, maybe you haven't or somebody out there that has not. Um, uh, Rube Waddell was like this incredibly eccentric type pitcher. Right. Okay. Like he was like the, at least the stereotype of him was Yeah, like, he would like be pitching in like a big game and he would see a puppy or something. And he would go, <laughs> Oh my God, a puppy. Like he would like, <laughs> they, like he had this really like eccentric thing. Like teams would do weird little stuff like that to throw him off of his game. That oh. sounds like somebody I know really well. And he's sitting right across oh, the way from me. Oh my God. I'm super. Oh, you guys got keys, animal man. talk. Maybe that's the, I'm just, it, keys, yeah, maybe, that's a, maybe that's a, uh, a, you know, a story for animal talk. Yeah. Guys, other show. Um, but anyways, that's the kind of stuff like, but he was, but he talked about, he's like, Rube Waddell was like so good. Like, mm -hmm. like he had this, this stunt that he would pull in the ninth inning where he would like walk the bases loaded, like literally intentionally walk the bases loaded and then tell his infielders to go out in the outfield. <laughs> and then he would strike the next three guys out and end the game. Like he would do it just to like, <laughs> what team do you, he played for a couple. He played early on. I believe he, I believe he played for Cleveland super yeah. early on, but he was on the A's. He had okay. a, he actually, he go, I think he mentions the teams right here on his. All right. Uh, no, that's cool. But it's a, but I know he played for the A's, that's he funny. Played, he, but he played for a, a several different teams because he was like, like he was a super heavy drinker. He like yeah. as great as he was on the field, like he was also a major handful. Like he was really difficult. <laughs> like you had to do all this, um, not like Moriarty going after four guys at once. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> yeah, but he, he was, he, he was such a, a eccentric that he was very difficult, like, for, you know, by to work with, but like whenever you, whenever you were able to get yeah. him out on the field, like he was just dominant. Like yeah. that was, a, that was his uh, um thing. I wish they, you, you could probably have it right there, but yeah, sure. I know he played for, I'm pretty sure he played for Cleveland. I know so he played for what Hayes. else, what else have we not given enough attention to while we're talking about the, the Tigers here? Well, who else, what else did we glaze over? Well, there's one we story to get with, back the, to? With, with George Moriarty that I yeah. really did, that we didn't get to last okay. uh, episode. And I really wanted to get to it. All right. um, it just, it shows us because we talked about his brawling, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about the movie thing. We talked about all this different stuff. Um, And I think, you know, we painted this picture of a guy who was, you know, a talented, you know, artist is for, especially as like, you know, filmmaker, talented player. I mean, his first year in the first year in, in the major leagues, um, he, he let, he had 12, uh, he stole home 12 times. Yeah. And I don't know if, I don't think we covered this in last uh, show, but 
they there the guy actually wrote a poem about him about like it was like this it was uh um this iconic poem called don't die on third <laughs> which was about how it was a, it was like it was they used george moriarty stealing home stealing home right. as a metaphor for life like okay you know like you can just sit at third base and hope somebody else is going to drive you in or you can like take the initiative and like because he was the, known for stealing he home. He was known for stealing home. And that's so that's so that's one of the things Who we didn't steals talk home? About. I know it's 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 rare. These, these days you see a guy do it every once in a while, but uh, Moriarty did it 12 times in one year, which is in in his in his first you, season. So. You typically see that on a squeeze play in these days, right? Yeah, every once in a while you see somebody snag, you know, snag a, a steal home and it's like yeah. one of the most thrilling plays in baseball yeah. because it the great thing is the pitchers like standing there and the guy <laughs> usually, you know, he's usually the guy he's the the, the the you know, the guy in third sees something the pitchers totally ignoring them or something and mm. then that, that that third the, the guy in third is just every you know every pitch the guy's like inching closer a little closer and, closer. and he's a little closer <laughs> and then he just sees this moment where the guy pitcher is just not noticing them right and then the great thing is the pitcher turns to throw home you know what i mean just do something he always does and he can't even get right. him at home ah, which is such a the, 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 the love it stealing home is still like one of the most exciting plays in baseball sure um, Thanks you know, it's, and there's usually a cloud of dust. The ball just gets there. The guy dives, I and mean, it's a great, it's a great thing. But Moriarty did it 12 times. You know, I mean, there's it, it was a different era where stealing home was actually a, um, you know, Cobb stole home a bunch of times too. Yeah. I mean, he was a tremendous base stealer. But uh, you know, stealing home was like literally part of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like it was like part of the game. Like, is that guy going to steal home? You know, like pitchers really had to be. You know, it was it was, a, it was much like a, they call it small ball. Um you know, baseball back then was, you know, wasn't so much based on the home run like it is now. Mm -hmm. And it, so there was a lot of that, uh, you know, stealing home and this kind of stuff. But anyways, Moriarty, um, it was like, they actually got this guy wrote like a, a poem, like a story about Moriarty. And then they equated it to like life, like plenty of people get the third base, but you know, plenty of people sit there and wait for somebody else to, to, to get that last hit, you know, to, to drive him in or, you know, to get them to that final leg of achievement in their life. He's like, but only the very few, you know, take the initiative themselves and like they take home, you know, like they actually go for home themselves, you know, like it was like a total metaphor. So anyways, they, um, so that was, that was big at the, at the yeah. time. Like, yeah. uh, so it was a big, it was, it was huge. I mean, it, when they read the guy that originally did it, uh, I think his name was William Cameron that originally wrote it and you can read it. If you look up, um, don't die on third, it's on the internet. It's all okay. the internet. It's a great little story. But uh, but the idea was is that you know they it was a metaphor they were you know back you know using baseball as a metaphor for life that you know don't don't die on third you know take take home you know like that was the idea so anyways so we've talked about this with Moriarty where um you know there was Moriarty the player there was Moriarty the umpire you know there was um, Moriarty the brawler the the poet the movie maker but I wanted to read a little a, a little quote it's very short yeah um, absolutely and I could just describe it but. Uh, but it's got more power when you read it from somebody that actually was there and wrote it. And there's actually two. This is a, I guess you could say a Moriarty incident, but uh, <laughs> not as not as not as dramatic as fighting for Chicago White Sox uh, in the play, or um, not as uh, you know not as crazy as some of his other stuff that his other antics. So, anyway, so this is just to give you a frame, uh, sort of a frame of reference. This is, you know, Game Three of the 1935 world series uh, george moriarty threw out three cubs managers and of course his long track record with detroit and the tigers and all this um has made him uh, a total target for um you know for 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 criticism of having thrown out three cubs managers in the same game i mean that's that's like unheard of yeah and so anyways um so here so so here it is. So this is at the World Series. Mm -hmm. Okay, and keep in mind where this is this involves Frank Navin. Mm -hmm. All right. And Frank Navin, as we recall him from a previous show, Frank Navin is like the ultimate, you know, they call him the poker face. Right. Because he never has any emotion. He's just like there's in fact, there's a joke article that I put in the second book in Frank Navin's section, which is a they call it a magic eye, where they show six different moments of a game with with Frank Navin's expressions. They're like this is the most pivotal moment of the second inning. And Frank Navin is just sitting there. Same stone stoic. Face. Yeah. So it's the same stoic face in every picture going, you know, this is the most critical, you know, Tigers have just scored five runs. You know, the Tigers are up. They're about to win the game, you know, and they go, uh, and he's, he's like, like, and then there's like, yeah, exactly. It's just Navin stone face. You uh, know? There was, it was such a joke that he was like, you know, like a bookkeeper. Yeah. Like that's what they nicknamed the, uh, the poker face. So anyways, so that's, so it's going to come as a shock to you, you know, to anybody that knows this idea to hear the story of Frank Navin 
Um, and keep in mind, we, there was also the incident with George Marty early when he got in that fight with the Red Sox on mm -hmm. Sunday baseball. <laughs> and Naven actually showed a little enthusiasm then too. Right. Um, because he was standing in the dugout goal pleading for order in the middle of the Sunday baseball game. So so that moment of excitement is really the only other known um, you know, frenzy of Frank Naven, with the exception of the one that I'm about to read you now. So this is in the, in the 1935 World Series. Uh, and so this art, this comes out of, um, by Fred Lieb, um, in his history book on the Detroit Tigers. And so a cub partisan seated in a box near Frank Navin yelled, Moriarty, you're a thief. Navin arose in his own box and called back. George Moriarty is not a thief. And don't you ever say that again. There isn't a more honest man in the world. So Fred Lieb made sure Fred Lieb's book on the Detroit Tigers is an incredible book. And of all the stories that he could write about, I mean, this is not like an encyclopedia. His book yeah. is not that long. I mean, his 1935 Tiger section is maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 pages long. Okay. And so of all the moments that he could chronicle for that, the fact that he includes a passage about that happening mm. says volumes about, you know, this, about Moriarty and mm. Navin and all this. But there's one more article and it's, and this is a very, you know, sort of verifies the incident which is, uh, this is by um, Bob Murphy in the Detroit Times. And this happened, this is November 14th, 1935. Um, and so, so then here it is. This is actually Moriarty talking. He says, and never continued Moriarty, can I forget what he, and he's talking about Frank Navin, uh, did did during the past World Series. I heard about it, I heard about it from other people. Some fan in the Cub ballparks, in the, so this is, it happened in Wrigley Field. Some fan in the Cub ballpark stood and yelled, thief, when I called, when I called one of the, when I called one on the Cubs that he didn't like, meaning he called a strike or a ball that they didn't sure. like. So I learned that Mr. Navin arose from his seat and told the fan he couldn't say that about me. He told me that he had known me since I was a kid of twenty, that I wasn't a thief. Mr. Navin told me later that fellow came to him and apologized. Uh, <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? So this is like verified from two different perspectives. Right. Like Fred Lieb years later is writing about this. I mean, he, I think his book, the Tiger book, came out in the '40s. Um, and then here, this is actually at that time, 1935, of, uh -huh. of Moriarty himself talking to um, Bob Murphy. And I think this is shortly after the passing of Frank Navin. That's why that article was, why that was extracted, mm. you know, why that was mentioned in the newspaper. I love it. But uh, so, yeah, he's like Frank Navin's like, don't, you know, like of all the million hecklers, yeah. you know, at Wrigley Field. Uh, yeah. And the guy says, Moriarty, you're a thief. And he's in, you know, Navin's like. Hold on a second, buddy. <laughs> you know, like eight million things, and of, of that one thing, like you say, you know, we we just set the stage perfectly with Frank Navin here, where Navin is like the most stoic person. You can't rattle him; he doesn't get yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have any negativity or anything Whoa, until you get up to the point where, until you say something about George Moriarty. You see right, what I'm right. saying? Like that's how that esteemed point, he was. He that. wasn't a Tiger player. He was the umpire he was the of the umpire. game. He was exactly. a former. He's a former player exactly. and a former manager. Wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it, it kind of, you know, that's why I, I love that concept is because, yeah. or that story, because it, it really shows the level of respect, you know, that especially between Navin and, um, and Moriarty, you know, was so high that Navin is like the ultimate poker face going to call out a fan. Right. Yeah. Say, what are you, don't you, I mean, that's just, and that's in a baseball game. Come on, you're everybody's you know talking bad about an umpire sure. going, hey, you could kill that guy, you know, you stink, you know, whatever. You know, heckling an umpire is almost you know part of the game yeah. from the fan perspective. And the fact that Navin would would like call out a fan going, Don't you dare say that about <laughs> the umpire. How yeah. dare you, sir? He's a great he's, he's, he's maybe a lot of things, you know, but he's not a thief. <laughs> you know, like that it, to, to me, that's just like what yeah. a I mean, what a I mean, it just it speaks absolute volumes. Right about what um about the level of respect at least between navin um and and moriarty it's great which, uh, yeah their time kind of you know of course dated like i say dated back to the earlier days with the where he's where he told you know after that red sox fight mm -hmm. he said you know don't let don't ever let him do that to you again jordan he said i won't mr david he says no don't ever let him spit in your eye like that again. Yeah. You know, like it wasn't <laughs> so Love anyways it. yeah that's that's another story i definitely had to get in on there so we will yeah again there's no way we'll be done with the tigers ever we'll come back to them yeah and we'll talk more about them we got more teams and more champions yeah. to talk about because there were 33 different championships yeah, in 1935 time man. it is like, i'm excited like, about yeah, it I'm, I'm i'm in a group man. yeah I'm, I'm in, yeah for sure i'm digging it and people are digging it too nico carolyn tim tim Welcome. and uh, gareth uh they were all checking Giggs. in today and yeah, saying gareth, hey yeah, so my boy gigs yeah so thanks he's, for, he's, uh, he's in england so he's oh. we got a we got a viewer in england if this right, says right. Gareth is on there oh yeah uh, 
that's gigs. Yep. So uh, gigs. Thanks for uh, yeah. being with us. Uh, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in Detroit city of champions, the podcast, make sure you like, and subscribe wherever finer podcasts are sold, which is kind of a misnomer because it's absolutely free to yeah, subscribe. For sure. At least right now it is one yeah. of these days we're going to get big time Put it behind a paywall. It's going to be big time. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's it. like subscription only, but we might do something where if you're an original viewer, original listener, that's it. like, you know, there's going to be deals. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll cut you a deal. Oh, yeah. We'll get like 10% off. When we start <laughs> yeah. charging. So yeah, like I'm saying, like be a viewer now. It, it, it will make, it'll pay off in the long run. Like, Listen, the website guaranteed. is. Uh, DetroitCityOfChampions.com. Easy enough. Yeah, as easy as you get. And uh, so, yeah, follow us on uh, Facebook, and the videos are on YouTube. And yep. as I, I had a bunch of Moriarty pictures up, too, oh, while cool. we were doing cool, that. Cool, cool, And so, you got some of the newspaper yep, stuff in had all the newspaper awesome. stuff while we were rolling. So you can check that out. Uh, if you're listening to the audio podcast, it's kind of worth a stroll over to check out the YouTube videos because we had some photos into those as well. So thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Appreciate it. Charles, appreciate you yep, and Jamie, the partnership. Matt, Matt's, your Matt's back Holy there. crap. Yeah, I yeah, he's, he's back there. Matt's, me. Dude, Matt's the main, the brains of the entire oh, operation. No, God, no, man. I, I didn't spend eight years of seven, eight years of my life putting all this together. You are the brains. Oh, I'm just back here pushing buttons well, and you're enjoying the, Yeah, the but, but you're the man back there behind the scenes, man. Like, don't like, don't let Jamie fool here. you. No, you guys are both. You guys both. <laughs> I, I, love, I really love you guys. This is a, it's a great thing. And We appreciate you um, for sure. It's just yeah. cool because I kind of just stroll in and you guys are tweaking all the stuff. Okay, we're ready. Let's get it going. Showtime. Yeah, so I just got to come up. I got my newspaper. That's it. <laughs> hey, I got this newspaper, guys. Let's talk about this day, you know. Yeah. But it's fun. It's cool. I like. Appreciate it. you. Right. We're gonna do it all again next week. Yeah. Detroit City of Champions, the podcast.